uh, we'll be talking about appropriate online pattern matching in some linear time. Um, thank you. Um, I would like to tell you something about our results on pattern matching, and I will try to explain you what is it about. And this is actually joint work with uh, Diptarka Chakraborty and Debarati Das. So Diptarka was a postdoc in Prague. Uh, now he is at National University in Singapore. Uh, Debarati was a PhD student in Prague. Now she is at uh, the Denmark um, Centre Bark. Uh, but uh, none of them could actually come. So they are like uh, they would be local, but they couldn't come. So. Uh, so I have the opportunity to be here. Uh, so I would like to tell you about pattern matching. So what is the problem actually? So the pattern matching problem is actually a problem which people consider for a long time. So you're given some pattern, which is a string, that's a string P, and then you are given some text T, and you are supposed to find all occurrences of uh, this pattern P in uh, the string T. So like over here, there is this occurrence and that occurrence. That's what uh, people call pattern matching. And this is a problem which was studied uh, already like in 50s, 60s, 70s. And we have no like, good algorithms for this problem, uh, which run pretty much in linear time in uh, the length of P and T. So this problem is actually very, very useful. And nowadays, it's actually even more useful than before, because there is a lot of data you have to actually search in. For example, there are genomic data where you want when, to, you, when you have actually given protein P, you have like a big genome and you are trying to actually find where, where it actually appears in the, in the genome. But in these scenarios actually, uh, typically you don't actually want just exact match because there may be some small mutations in the protein so you want to actually find all occurrences of protein so you should actually consider like generalized problem where you actually not only look for, for like exact matches in the text but you want to actually find also like anything which looks kind of similar. So how do you actually define similar? So in, uh, for us, like in this work, what we actually look at is uh, so-called eddy distance. So what's eddy distance? So eddy distance, uh, you've got two strings and you want to compare them. How similar are they? And uh, this actually this is a measure which actually tells you how close they are to each other. So you, you got two strings, P and Q, and you, want to, uh, you are asking how many operations you have to make to, to the string P to actually get to the Q. And what kind of operations I allow you, I allow you to actually delete some symbols. So for example, over here I am deleting Z from, uh, from the string. Over here I can also allow you to change sim some symbols, so I'm actually changing W to Q uh, to G, and I can also insert symbols. So I can, uh, I can actually insert symbols into the string and that actually makes it longer. So these are the operations which we actually allow, and these are like uh, typical operations you, you can actually see, because that's actually how mutations actually work. So that's uh, that's uh, how you would like to how you would like to measure similarity of string, and uh, you would like to actually find occurrences, all occurrences of P which are kind of similar. So so this is uh, what people call approximate pattern matching. So in the approximate pattern matching scenario, you have actually the, uh, the pattern P and the text T, and you want to find everything which looks similar to, to P. But of course, that could be actually quadratic number of strings in the length of T, so you don't actually really want to do that, exactly this. So rather, you want to actually simplify your job a little bit, and you want to actually only find kind of a position where there, there is a good match. So how do you do that? So you can define actually, you can define a parameter KT, so for each position, one up to n, so t runs from one to n, uh, you can actually look uh, what is the best match which actually ends here. So for, for the position t, the kt is going to tell me uh, what's the minimal edit distance between p and any string which actually ends here. So I actually minimize over various, various lengths i, so I take strings uh, from i up to t, and uh, I actually check what, what is the minimum edit distance. And I would like to actually uh, output all positions which have uh, this value of small. Or more generally, actually, I would like to actually find, for each position t, I would like to actually find this value k, k. So I would like to actually output k1 up to kn. So the length of the strings for me actually typically will be, uh, the pattern will be of length w, and uh, the, st the text will be of length n. So th these are the parameters I am actually, I want to look at. So let me tell you actually what, uh, what, are, what are our results for this problem. 
So our results for these programs are actually algorithms, two algorithms. So first of all, it's an algorithm which actually solves this, uh, this uh, problem for finding k1 up to kn. And it solves it in time n to the w uh, to the three quarters. So we actually call this sublinear because uh, if you look in amortized setting, if you just look actually on the dependence on the length of the pattern, if you normalize by the, the length of the text, then it's actually sublinear in the length of the pattern. So that's why we actually call it sublinear. And this is actually the first algorithm of this type, which actually has like sublinear running time. Uh, but there is actually a small catch. So we actually find exact values of k1 up to kn. We actually find some approximation for these values. So we find actually a constant factor approximation. For some constant, which I'm not going to specify, we can actually find, uh, but it's not actually like enormous, so we can actually find, uh, find some values which, are, uh, which actually approximated this uh, true sequence k1 up to kn within a factor of say 10. So that's, uh, that's what we can actually do. And uh, so that's actually in the offline setting. So in the offline setting, uh, what we have is actually we do have the two strings and they are actually given to us and we can actually work on them as we wish. And then there is actually online setting. In the online setting, uh, the problem is actually kind of the same. We want to calculate the, the, uh, the sequence k1 up to kn or some good enough approximation, uh, but actually, so the setup is that actually we, we are given first P and then T arrives uh, symbols by symbol. So whenever uh, actually next symbol of T arrives, we are supposed to output what K prime T is. So that's, uh, that's the game for the online setting. And over here we can actually achieve uh, approximation which is uh, not quite constant. It's actually uh, the output sequence which is uh, like constant factor times KT plus some additive term W to the 8 over 9. So I've actually explained why uh, we get this additive factor. But what that means is that if actually the edit distance is large, it's bigger than this w to the 8, 9, which is the length of the pattern, then uh, we do actually have a constant factor approximation. If the actual value of kt is actually smaller than this value, then we kind of, um, we don't get a good approximation. And um, in, our, in the online setting, what we have is actually the, on average, we actually spend uh, w to the 1 minus 1 over 8 time to process a symbol and uh, we need uh, what we want to minimize actually in this case is also the memory footprint so not, not only the time but also the memory so what we have is uh, in the so-called in the model where the p is stored and uh, we need uh, we just count the additional memory um, in addition to actually storing p so we store p plus w to the 1 minus 1 over 54 bits of uh, memory roughly so that's, uh, that, that are the, uh, our two main results. So how does this actually compare to uh, what was known before? So people actually looked on approximate pattern matching for a long time. And um, uh, the first algorithm which actually was, uh, was giving interesting bound was uh, algorithms by Sellers from uh, 1980. And that actually achieved the complexity n times w. So that's, uh, that's kind of a typical typical complexity that is actually product of the length of the pattern uh, times the length of the text. So you get uh, bound n times w. And uh, there was a small improvement by Mashek and Patterson who actually shaved off like log n factor from, from, uh, from this running time. And uh, this is basically, this is it. So there is like uh, nothing substantially faster if you want a generic algorithm which would work actually for all, for all uh, basically like edit distance thresholds. There are actually some uh, specific algorithms if you actually limit, uh, limit uh, by a threshold k how far actually you care about the edit distance. So if the edit distance is going to be bigger than the threshold k, then you, do, you can just output infinity, but if it's smaller, then you should actually output exact value. So there is actually a sequence of such, a, such algorithms which actually perform well uh, with respect to the time. So there is, uh, and all of them t typically have a running time like n times k. So if you limit the edit distance to be at most k, which is the maximum possible edit distance, uh, well, the, edit, the maximum edit distance would be w, so, so the parameter k is between 1 and w, and uh, this has actually a running time n times k, so if the k is sufficiently small, say square root of, square root of w, then you get actually something much better than, than what sellers get. 
there is uh, there is yet another algorithm which actually has uh, has algorithm uh, which has a running time close to linear if k is really small. So if k is uh, like a fourth root of n, then it has actually linear running time. So so this is actually uh, this is like a just small fraction of, of what's known, but these are the main the main things. So so what is important to compare it is to basically this Sellers or Mashek Patterson, and uh, which actually runs in this n times w, and uh, our result actually runs in n times w to the uh, w to the uh, three over four. So that's uh, that's the distinction. Uh, but our algorithm is approximate as there actually they give you the exact value of k uh, k t for for each t. So that's uh, that's another another uh, distinction between our algorithm. So it's not uh, completely comparable. So uh, this is for the offline setting where you have full access to, to the strings. In the online setting, there is, actually, uh, th there is actually quite a few works also in that regime. And they actually were, uh, they look on uh, various measures of the similarity between strings. So not only for added distance, but there are some easier, easier actually uh, distances to calculate like Hamming distance or L2 norm. So, so these norms are actually easier to compute because you just align the strings and you just go over them. Uh, so there is actually gener generic uh, reduction uh, which kind of works in black box way by Clifford et al. And they actually have a general reduction which takes offline algorithm and then turns it into online algorithm. But it doesn't actually work for edit distance because the edit distance kind of uh, can insert and delete symbols and that's actually proven for these algorithms. However, there are, there are some uh, results on this, and um, there is a result by Clifford and Sach, actually like two results. One of them actually first uh, got, uh, got the runtime k times log n, and then they shift the uh, shade uh, log n factor, and it uses uh, space which is proportional to, to the p. So they have to preprocess uh, to, the dub, to the pattern p. So they have to preprocess the p and store some data structure in the memory, and then they have, like, uh, then they have this running time. And, and there is another result, which is uh, by Starikovskaya, and uh, she actually uh, she actually designed an algorithm, which uh, again for like small values of k, it actually works well. So uh, if uh, uh, it actually has a running time per symbol, like k k squared times square of w plus k to the thirteen. So for like k to the one over twenty, it's actually going to work in really good time, and it has a uh, space space k to the a times uh, w, uh, square root of w. So again, like for small enough k, this is actually sublinear in the size of the pattern. So this is actually what, uh, what, uh, how we can compare it to, to our solution. So our solution actually gives you running time w to the three quarters, and uh, it uh, gives you space w to the one minus one over 54 plus the length of the p, which we have to store. So this is, uh, so this is uh, what's known about pattern matching. So pattern matching is actually, yep, uh, the size of the alphabet. Uh, I don't think it actually matters for these results, yeah. Uh, I don't think it matters for any of these results, basically. Yeah. It, it could actually, sometimes it does, but n not in, in these. So, so the pattern matching actually problem, this approximate pattern matching problem, is actually generalization of, of a problem which is just a computing at a distance. So you, you have two strings of length n, this p and q, and you want to compute at a distance. And uh, essentially, if you instantiate the pattern to be, to be one of the strings and the, the text to be the other string, then uh, it's exactly basically you are talking about computing at a distance. And then uh, uh, what you want to, uh, then actually the, the results which we have seen kind of actually match what's known about computing at a distance. So, so at a distance can be computed uh, in time n squared over log square n roughly. And again, there is a sequence of algorithms. And uh, you know, if you limit how far you care about the at a distance, then you have an algorithm which runs in time n times k. And there is an algorithm which runs in time n plus k squared. And uh, so this is actually known to be pretty much closest to the best possible because uh, there is a sequence of recent results which actually show that uh, you cannot really improve this quadratic time unless something unlikely happens. Like we prove circuit lower bound, uh, which perhaps they are true, but we don't know how to prove them, so it's kind of unlikely to do it right now. Or uh, that we would f improve actually algorithms for satisfiability, so we basically fa falsify 
the strong exponential time hypothesis. So under those assumptions, basically, this, uh, this uh, n-squared time is pretty much optimal, and we cannot do any better. So people actually look also for approximation, and again, there is like a huge body of work on approximation, and there are two rec recent results uh, which kind of like uh, are, are main for, for our work. So that's actually constant factor approximation algorithms, and there were like uh, two constant factor approximations for computing any distance last year. So first of all, there was a quantum algorithm uh, by Borogioni et, et al, which actually runs in subquadratic time, so it runs in time n to the 1.708. And then there was actually a result by, by actually us, uh, together with uh, Elazar Goldenberg and Mike Sachs, and we get actually classical algorithm which does constant factor approximation and runs in time n to the 1.647. And uh, this algorithm is actually a starting point for our algorithm, so, so that's why I'm actually mentioning these, because uh, this is actually, these two problems, computing at a distance and computing approximate pattern matching is actually, are closely related. So, so that's, uh, that's how, why, why it's actually relevant. So let me actually just give you some hint of the ideas which we actually use to, to solve this problem. So the main actually, the main uh, kind of the main tool, how people actually look on this is so-called at a distance graph or pattern matching graph, which I will introduce in a second. And um, so what's at a distance graph? So at a distance graph is the following graph. So you have a uh, pattern P, which is over here. You have text T, which is over here. And you make this grid graph where there are uh, diagonal edges and there are like horizontal and vertical edges, and they have assigned some cost. And what kind of cost do you assign to them? Well, you assign cost one to, to horizontal edges, to horizontal edges, cost one to vertical edges. And the diagonal edges actually have cost which corresponds to whether the symbols at a given position match or not. So if, if I am looking at a position I here and position J here, then uh, the cost of this edge is going to be whether the two symbols are the same or not. So if they are the same, then you, you pay zero. If they are different, then you will pay one. And you can actually easily uh, kind of like if you think about it, what this measures, so the horizontal, uh, the horizontal edges actually corresponds to removing symbols from T. The vertical uh, edges actually corresponds to actually removing symbols from, from P. And the diagonal edges just means that you are a matching symbol or you are a mismatching if you actually pay cost one. So what you can show is that, uh, that uh, the, edit distance, the edit distance between strings P and T actually corresponds exactly to the shortest path from the bottom left corner, so from point zero zero to point NW. So that's, uh, that's exactly the cost, uh, cost of, uh, uh, of transforming P into T using edit operations. So if you actually calculate this, uh, calculate the cost, uh, the shortest path from that point to this, then you actually know what's the edit distance. And that can be done in time, which is proportional to the size of this graph so in times n and w, because this is actually a very simple graph. And that's actually uh, what the standard algorithms do. They actually just calculate the shortest path in this graph. So if you, if you talk about uh, approximate pattern matching graph, so that, uh, then the sellers actually had the following, uh, the sellers had actually the following idea. So he actually took the added distance graph and he, he actually augmented it by edges, which actually start from this point and actually have cost zero and go to all, all points at the bottom of this graph. So you actually can jump uh, for the price of zero to any, any of the bottom, uh, bot bottom vertices. And it turns out that now actually if you, if you calculate the shortest path from this point to any point at the top, you exactly get actually the value of KT. So you can actually think about this, but uh, so, so actually just, uh, if you just take this graph and calculate actually what's the cost of, uh, of getting to these points that actually tells you the, uh, all the values kt. So that's how you actually can calculate in this time n time w, you can actually solve this approximate pattern matching problem exactly. So if we just care about <coughs> approximation, so how can we actually solve it? So what's, what's the, what is uh, the main tool, main technique which we use? So we actually approximate this pattern, uh, pattern matching uh, graph by some uh, kind of a subgraph with edit shortcuts. So what we do is that we actually take blocks of these graphs and we actually calculate exactly what's the, what's the cost of actually going from here to here. And we remove all diagonal edges and just put there these shortcuts. So for various boxes, so we basically cover this graph by boxes for which we know the exact cost. 
and uh, we remove everything else. And if you do this, then that's actually going to kind of give you like a rough approximation of the original graph. So, so the question then is how do you actually calculate for, for uh, like these shortcut edges, how, how do you calculate cost of these, these boxes for a large enough uh, fraction of the boxes? So you want to actually put there as many boxes as you can for cheap. And uh, that's, uh, that's where actually the, the technique of this uh, edit distance uh, paper comes in, the technique by, uh, which we used before for computing edit distance. And that actually is based on the following idea. So let me just uh, briefly describe it. So, so, so here, is, uh, here is actually how we proceed to, to, to find these boxes. So, so we take uh, some epsilon. So we want to actually say uh, we break the T into blocks of size W to the 1 half, say. You can actually choose different parameters, but let's say we do it like this. So we break the, uh, the text T into these blocks. And now what we want, actually, we want to find all matches all matches for, for each of these blocks in, uh, in P up to which are a distance up to epsilon. So if we would find this for each epsilon of the form 2, 3 minus i, and we, put, we would put there these shortcut edges, then that would give a good approximation for, for, uh, for the overall graph. So, so for each of these intervals, we want to actually find these boxes, uh, which actually which, which represents that uh, this block actually matches this substring in P. So that's what we want to find. And uh, we want to find uh, if they actually are at distance epsilon. So how can you find them? So if you choose, just do it naively, this is exactly pattern matching problems. You've got this block. That's your pattern now. And you, in, this, in this original pattern, you're actually looking for matches. So that's exactly a pattern matching problem. And we know how, how much that costs. That costs actually uh, the length of the pattern, which is in this case w to the 1 half times w. So that costs w to the 3 half. And since the number of blocks you, you, you have to deal with is n over w to the 1 half, you end up with the cost n, n, n times w. So if you do this actually the way I described, then uh, sure, you can actually calculate it for all epsilon. You just have like logarithmically many choices. But it's going to cost you basically, again, the same thing as before. So you don't actually, you don't actually uh, get anything uh, from this. So the algorithm will be slower, and it will be just approximate algorithm. So you want to actually, you want to do it faster. So how can you do it faster? Well, here is an observation. So if, uh, if uh, this block actually matches that block, well, that means that if you take some sub-blocks of this block, they are actually going to match some uh, like corresponding sub-blocks here also well. So in particular, actually, if I, take, uh, if I now take uh, like sub-block of, of the block I care about, so, so this is the block I care about, so I take some random sub-block of some length uh, of long, uh, w to the 1 quarter. So again, there is, uh, there is a parameter of the length of this block, and I just pick a random sub-block of this length. And I will actually find all the matches to, to that sub-block in P. <coughs> so, so for what kind of matches I will be looking for? Well, I will be looking for matches which are up to a distance, like, say, 2 times epsilon. If you go for a distance 2 times epsilon, then uh, just by Markov inequality, you know that, like, on average, at least half of these should actually, uh, half of the blocks, you, the big blocks you are looking for should actually have in that corresponding sub-block I prime, you should actually see at the distance at most to epsilon. So if you, if you find all these blocks, then what you can do is you can just like, uh, then like expand them and check whether they really are the good matches or not. So, so that's actually the, uh, the, the idea. So the idea is we will actually sample small block. We will search for, we will search for close matches up to, say, distance to epsilon, and we will expand all the close matches. Now, of course, the problem could be that there will be too many of these small matches. So we will set some threshold, and if there will be too many of them, then we actually will do something else. But if there are just few up to some threshold d, which we will again set like to w to the 1 quarter, then uh, if, if, the sm if these small matches are like few at most d, then we do actually expand all of them and we are happy. We found all the blocks. And you can actually prove that that actually works. Uh, what will be the running time? Well, so now what we did is actually we, we saved, instead of actually having to deal with this whole, whole actually graph over here, we actually are dealing with just an, one narrow strip. And if you calculate the cost, what we are saving, we are basically saving the, 
the ratio between the length of this big block versus uh, the length of the short block. So that's, uh, the ratio is like uh, W to the one quarter. So if you just uh, do the calculation, how much it costs you, it's going to cost you, uh, it, it's going to cost you this n to the n times W to the three quarter. So if you calculate the total cost actually of, uh, of doing this in for every big block. Now how much is going to cost you these expansions, well, since we put the threshold uh, D there on the number of these expansions we are going to make, then that's also going to actually evaluate to the same number. So we got, we got at most D expansions. Each expansion cost you like W to the one half squared, which is the cost of the usual ID distance algorithm. And the number of blocks is N over W to the one half. So again, in total, you end up with the same, same running time, N to the W to the C code. So this is actually if the number of blocks is, uh, if the number of blocks actually, if the number of candidate, candidate short matches is actually small at most D. Well, if it's bigger, then uh, what you can do is, so this is a situation when it's bigger, then you do something more complicated. You don't actually expand because you cannot afford to do that. But if that happens, then what, you, what happens is that you actually learn a lot of information. So, so you found a lot of matching, a lot of matching actually substrings in here in P, which look similar to I prime. So what you do is actually you look also for matching blocks in T for this I prime, and then you can actually fill in this grid of boxes because everything here in this picture, everything which is blue, actually corresponds to good matches between, uh, between uh, the strings in P and T. So you learn a lot of information actually cheaply. And uh, again, if you calculate cost, then you end up with the same same uh, runtime, the total runtime in these, uh, in these situations will be like n times w to the three quarter. So if you actually leverage these two scenarios as done in this at the distance uh, paper before, then you do actually get, uh, uh, get a covering of the, of the whole uh, matrix by, by good, enough, good enough boxes which actually approximate the pattern matching problem. So, so this would be actually the offline algorithm. So the offline algorithm actually follows this paradigm. So we have to actually, we have to actually, you have to work it out, then you have to actually uh, do this thing, but it actually follows this paradigm. For the online version, what we do is we, we kind of do it actually like left to right. So we don't do it actually all at once. We have to actually do it uh, all, like in a, in, a, in a sequence from left to right. So we actually look first for, for actually, we process first this block, then the next one, et cetera. We just have to store some uh, small information. And at the same time, we have to actually also somehow be putting, uh, piecing these uh, blocks together. So, so there is a second stage where you have to actually take uh, these, this approximate pattern matching graph, which is covered by these shortcut edges, and you have to actually calculate the solution from that. So we have to kind of interleave these two phases together to get the overall online algorithm. So this is, uh, this is uh, for our result. So let me just actually uh, say what happened afterwards. So, so there is actually now uh, improvement on our algorithms. So th there is, uh, Andoni actually improved this pa pattern matching algorithm. So he actually gets like n times w to the one half plus epsilon. So for an epsilon, you can actually get such a running time. So that's actually, uh, that's also can be used for uh, like constant factor approximation. Uh, so, you, so he gets uh, this algorithm which runs in time n to the three half plus epsilon for calculating at a distance. And, and then, then there is another like um, uh, another kind of improvement, but it's, uh, it's again slightly actually like uh, orthogonal. So there is a result by Brackenziek and Rubinstein and by me and Mike Sachs. So we get actually at a distance algorithm which runs in time n to the one plus epsilon for n epsilon, so it's almost linear, but it actually only works uh, when the at a distance is large. So uh, when the at a distance is say n to the one minus gamma. So it doesn't work for a small range, neither of these results actually. And um, uh, we don't know actually how to, how to do, do it for the whole range. So this is actually the same issue that we have with the online algorithm, that the online algorithm has this additive error. So these algorithms also have this additive error, and that's why they actually work only in this high at the distance range. So let me just uh, conclude by open questions. So, so I think the m kind of like most tantalizing open question is, can we do actually approximate pattern matching in time n plus w? So in linear time or quasi-linear. So, 
So I do believe that there might be such an algorithm. I have no idea how, how to make it, but uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm confident that, that there must be. Or slightly weaker, so can you actually at least do it n times n times w to the epsilon for any epsilon you choose? So thank you.